Welcome back. This time we're going to see some web app vulnerability scanning. A very handy tool for this is called Nikto. The usage is pretty easy, so you see nikto.h and the URL of the page you want to analyze. It's a little bit like Nessus but for web apps. We see that we're having uh, several results related to several applications PHP, SQL, PHP might mean SMTP, you name it. Alright, so here's our results. We can have more information on specific exploits by checking these web pages included in the results. Anyway, we can see some serious vulnerabilities related to OpenSSL, uh, SMTP, Apache, PHP, MyAdmin, and XAMPP. You see that the root page redirects to this on the left, which is uh, the vulnerable XP machine. And you see that the default version we have for XAMPP is a vulnerable one, 1.7.2. Now, another thing we have on this vulnerable XP machine is this vulnerable web server called Zervit running on port 3232. MMAP though does recognize the service even with service versioning. But if I can connect to that page I have a directory listing. Now if we connect through netcat and we enter a GET request I can see that observe it version 0 2.4 as it's repeated on the bottom here. So I can try and use a tool called Cadaver to connect to the web dev directory on this vulnerable XAMPP application. It looks like default credentials are accepted. So we're connected to the web dev directory. And these are the commands we can run on it. So I'm gonna try and upload a PHP reverse shell through this command but we don't have the right permissions, it seems. Okay. No big deal. Anyway, a very dangerous vulnerability that I found in newest XAMPP version as well is that we can access PHP my admin without any sort of credentials or password whatsoever. And the bad thing is we're connected as root, so we can run SQL commands with privileged rights. So we can do pretty much what we want. As a matter of fact, I can see the users in the database within the user table. You see there are two users having a different set of privileges, we can pretty much change them the way we want, if we want to. We can also try a directory traversal attack through netcat 
on this Dervid server as we have access to the file listing. I'm gonna try and go five directories back from the root folder. Now we're gonna have this and it looks like we're successful and we can retrieve the boot parameter. Another thing we can do is try to understand which users exist on the SMTP server because the verify command is supported. And you see that Georgia is an existing local user while Matt is not. We can also understand if administrator is supporting user and looks like we have a root user on the SMTP server, which is very interesting. All right, so that's pretty much a short overview of vulnerability scanning for web applications and what you can do with that. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye bye.